Hey, good morning, everyone. So today I am working on a Chevy Tahoe with a drivability issue. A complaint is it loses power while driving. Well, when I first took it out, it ran fine. Then when it got hot, it actually started to like bog down while I was driving. I can actually get this thing to die while I'm driving. So it felt to me like a fuel issue. And the funny thing is, on the passenger seat of this car, I see a fuel filter. So, either somebody else diagnosed some, something with this, or you had a friend that said, oh, it feels like a fuel issue. Well, they were right. It does feel like a fuel issue. Um, obviously, they tried that, and it didn't work. Now, I got a funny feeling the fuel pump is no good. Now, let me show you what I'm going to be looking at here. I did scan it for codes, and it only has EVAP codes. They're not going to really affect... They're not going to affect the running pretty much, um, not at least in this way. There are certain EVAP codes that can affect running. Most don't. Most EVAP issues don't affect running. But there are certain issues that can affect running. Like if you're getting um, basically unmetered fuel vapors getting sucked into the intake, that'll make the motor run rich. That'll affect the running. But that's not what the issue is here. So let me show you what I'm finding on the scanner. There's something called fuel trim. And my scanner will show fuel trim. Now, the numbers should hang right around zero, and you'll get a plus or minus number. If it's a minus number, that means it's taking fuel away. The O2 sensors are reading that it's too rich. If you're getting a positive number, that means it's adding fuel because it's not enough fuel in the system. You know, and it's basically taking that reading from uh, a calculation between mass air and O2 sensor. So it figures, okay, well, this is the amount of air going in a motor, and this is the reading from the O2 sensor. Uh, the O2 is too lean, let's add fuel. Or, hey, the O2 is too rich, let's take away fuel. So let me show you what I got right now. And now that positive and negative, negative number, it should hang right around zero. Plus or minus two, three, four, five, maybe. That might be a little extreme. Um, but usually I see between positive or negative two to three. Um, so let me just show you what I got here. So the highlighted line, short-term trim, that's basically live, like what's going on right now. If you look, long-term trim is at positive 25. So now, short-term, you'll see it bounces around a little bit negative. It might go a little bit positive. Um, usually on a car that's idling, I will usually see it have a tendency to go more towards negative than anything. But that's perfectly normal. Now, when I go to accelerate, I am on my dead end road here. Uh, I can make it die before I even get to the end there, and that's only an eighth mile. So what you might see on a perfectly running motor, you might see it go well into the negative. Um, sometimes you'll see it go well into the positive for a little bit and then kind of come close to zero again. But now watch what happens when I accelerate down the street. Now I'm just going to head down there, and this thing may actually die by the time I get to the end. So just watch that number there. Okay, here we go. Whoop, there it goes, and it died. <laughs> so you saw how high that number... Oh, shoot, didn't even... Maybe I messed up, and I might have come off the number. Let me try that again. Okay, sorry about that. I came off the number, you couldn't see it. So I'm going to try it again. Let's see if you can see this. It's right around zero. should hang somewhere right around there. You see the numbers going up, 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 up. That means it's adding fuel, and now it died. So now it's shut down. So that tells me I got a fuel pump issue or a fuel delivery issue. So now it's dead. Restarted. Okay. Let's go back to the shop, see if I can't figure out what's going on here. Uh, I don't even know if I got a fuel pressure gauge. I think in my move I misplaced it or lost it or I might have left it in New York when I moved down here. I gotta see if I have one. All right, so now let's see if what I told you is true about the fuel trims. Uh, I actually hooked up an external fuel pressure gauge. Uh, it's hooked right to the rail. Luckily this had a Schrader valve. Um, so I have it taped to the windshield. There you go. Kind of difficult to see. Let me see if this will help. And that'll help a little bit. All right, so 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to accelerate down the road and watch the gauge and you see what it does. Yeah, that's definitely not enough fuel pressure. Unfortunately, it's kind of dark in this vehicle, but I think you could see what I'm talking about there. It's good. Yeah, it's building up pressure. Again. I don't even know what spec is supposed to be on this car yet. I didn't even bother looking it up. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I know that zero is not enough fuel pressure. So let's go down the road here. Again, let's watch it one more time. Alright, so let's watch this together. Actually, let me zoom out a little bit. It might help. There we go. Okay. Yeah, something's going on with the fuel pump because it all of a sudden just goes completely dead and then it comes back to life. Because right now it had perfect power. Although you did hear a detonate detonated for a brief second there when the fuel pressure got really low just before it shifted uh, which meant you know it was running lean and I'm sure if I was watching the uh, fuel trims it would probably show the same thing that it got very lean and it was adding fuel to the point where it couldn't add any more fuel so it looks like this thing needs a fuel pump so I guess what I'm gonna have to do is call a customer see what they want to do and we're gonna go from there all right that's it for right now if you get anything out of my videos hit the like button actually you know what no I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is after I sell the fuel pump and after I install the fuel pump I'll make another video and I'll show you what the fuel pressure is supposed to be all right sounds good so I got the fuel pump in and uh, took it for a good ride and it runs great uh, the fuel trims the short-term trims are staying normal um, you know roughly plus or minus five um, usually hanging out right around plus three negative three something like that um, so anyway, here, I'll show you, I'm going to take it for a road test. I still got the gauge hooked up, um, but I'm going to show you what the fuel trims look like. I'm on my little dead end road here. I'm just rolling right now. But here, take a look at this. So right now I got sun glare going on too. Let me shut that off. So that might be an issue, I don't know. So there, you can see it's a like one, zero, two, one. That's perfectly normal. So now I'm going to just accelerate down the street. And it's got a lot more power in it than before. would never do this before. I mean, it's running good. And as soon as you let go of the throttle, it does jump up. That's normal. But it's hanging out there. Everything's good. Fuel pressure staying good. Pretty much right around, uh, let's see, like 42, something like that, 40. So it's pulling a little bit of fuel away, but it's good. That's, that's perfectly fine, the way it's reading. This thing does have 263,000 miles on it, too, so it does have some wear to it. Let's see if you can see the gauge. Like I said, I got some sun glare, but I'm going to try to put the back of the truck towards the sun. So maybe you can actually see that. Alright, so now I'm going to accelerate up the street. Alright, see that? It held steady. Just like it should. So this thing's running good. This thing's fixed. I'm happy with this. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, all right, yeah. If you get anything out of my videos, hit the like button. Please subscribe. Tell your friends to subscribe, please. It'll really help me out. I'm at like 720-something. I forgot the actual number. Like 728, I think, uh, as of this video. So it would help me out, and I need to get over 1,000. Um, and then I can start doing bigger and better things. So that's about it. Have a great day. Keep wrenching.